Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. We're glad you're with us this morning. This is the last Sunday of the Sundays after the Epiphany. And so we move quickly from Christmas and Epiphany to the season of Lent. And next Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday. And then, of course, we'll have Ash Wednesday and be in the season of Lent. A couple things to share with you. The bulletin and the hymns for this morning were included in your Getting Ready for Sunday email. So you can find those there. Also, um, we will be having our annual meeting today. We do the following worship on Zoom. That login information also was included in the Getting Ready for Sunday email. So hopefully you'll log in with us and help us to accomplish that important task this morning. This morning, helping us, of course, Jim Marks is on the piano. We have five scouts who are going to help us this morning. Um, Lucas, Eli, Ainsley, Devin, Tom. Did I get it all right? So thanks for helping us this morning. Um, David Neville is our head usher, and Gina and John are working on the PowerPoint and the sound. So thank you for everyone who is helping us this morning. Our opening video this morning, well, before we go that, our opening video this morning is called More Than a Building.
time in times of trouble and distress, God is always present with us. When we call out, God hears us. The name of the Lord brings comfort to heavy hearts. In God's name alone do we put our trust. The Lord will help those who seek God. God will answer the prayers of the people. Some take pride in their might and accomplishments. We will boast in God alone. We, we rise and stand in the righteousness of God. Let us worship God who is faithful, merciful, and just. Our opening hymn this morning is Sing Praise to God. Oh, 
So prayer concerns to share, share with you before we pray together. I will continue to pray for Eric Young, who is Marilyn Young's son, um, who lives in Massachusetts. We continue to pray for John Wolfinger. We continue to pray for Eileen Wiseman. And I mentioned last week um, and the week before about Shana Wentz's dad. Um, he actually came home, let's see, on Thursday. Um, he has oral cancer, and they, he had this very long surgery. And as it turns out, he did much better than they expected. He came home on Thursday without a trach and without a feeding tube, which is not what they expected to have happen. So he's actually doing uh, much better than they would have ever hoped, given the seriousness of his diagnosis. So uh, we give thanks for him and continue to pray for he and his family. <laughs> spoke through prophets, who spoke through those who would listen, who spoke through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the disciples, God who speaks through us, calls us to speak and calls us to listen. We come before you this day in these moments to lift our prayers to you. Our personal prayers, our corporate prayers, our prayers for our world, our prayers for our universe, our prayers for these moments in this moment, our prayers for the future, asking you to guide us. We come praying for forgiveness, for healing, for grace, for mercy and peace. We come praying for guidance, the assurance of your favor, knowing you are always with us, no matter where we go. We come knowing that, God, we are about to turn the calendar on the seasons in the church year. Advent, Epiphany. And now you'll call us, God, in the days to come to turn toward the cross. For all the stories of Lent. And your great challenge on our lives to live exactly as you call us to. When we fail, you... Offer us forgiveness and ask us to turn around and repent and go the other way. In the midst of all of our lives, God, in the midst of this day we've come, and we offer ourselves to you and we offer our prayers to you, knowing that you hear us. We pray especially this morning, God, for Eric and John and Eileen and Brent and many others, God, who need your healing power. Many people still affected by the virus. Many people with unsure questions about the future. Who need your healing and your grace in their lives. Oh God, your mercy is great. And we are thankful for your word as it speaks to us this day. Might we respond to the question, have you not heard with an affirmative in our lives that we've heard of your call and you are seeking to restore us as you restored the fortunes of the people of Israel? 
Thank you, God, for calling us together. Thank you for your presence with us this morning. Move us and shape us as we offer you our prayers this day. And hear us, God, in our prayer of confession. How can we look at this world and not sing of your praises, O God? The beauty and majesty of the world is overpowering. Yet we have a tendency to take all that you do for us for granted. We treat the world with callous indifference, using its resources carelessly and with little regard to the future. We insist on war as solutions for problems rather than peaceful striving. We turn our backs on people in need, the weak and the downtrodden, the unnoticed in our midst. We always believe that someone else will care for those in need. How foolish we are, O oh God. How ignorant we have become. You have given us all that we need. You have blessed us with the witness of Jesus Christ, who came so that we might learn how you would have us live in honor and peace. Forgive us. Heal our hearts and spirits. Make us fully aware of all our blessings and our responsibilities. Give us again a spirit of joy in serving you. Help us be agents of peace and hope to others. For we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with the commission. What then is my reward? Justice that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might make, so I might win more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might be, by all means, say so. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in his blessings. Second scripture comes from Mark, uh, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought him to all the, that were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. He would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said, everyone is searching for he answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. <laughs> So 
So our scripture for this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. This 40th chapter of Isaiah might be the most famous and the most well-read chapter in Isaiah. We've heard these words many times, and from the middle of this, and you'll hear it in a few, min in a few minutes, from the middle of, us, of this comes this whole angel's wings thing and what we sang about a little bit ago. So, so hear these words this morning. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood it since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground, than he blows on them and they wither, and the whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens, who all created these? He who brings out the starry host one by one, and calls them each by name, because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain of Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. And young men will stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I beg your friend. O God, may your word speak to us this day, that we might hear it with new and fresh ears, as your call on us to listen again, as you seek to restore us to be your people. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Do any of you suffer from news fatigue? Cindy, you do? Anybody suffer from news fatigue? Yeah. Do you, do you guys have a, a, a thing on your phone where you can tell how much time you've been on, how much screen time you've had? Yeah. Is it, is it available, Tommy? Can you look yours up? I'll, I'll give you a second. If you tell yours, I'll tell mine. Because I just got mine today. My weekly report. How many, how, many, how many hours of screen time per day did you spend last week? Uh, uh, seven. Seven. He, he's better than me. Cindy, you have yours? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell me? Uh, it was uh, three hours and 56 minutes. Three hours and 56 minutes? It's hardly worth having a phone for that. <laughs> anybody, else have, anybody else have that? Well, I beat you both. My screen time last week was, well, darn it, went away. <laughs> Eight hours and 59 minutes. Now, that's ridiculous, right? Now, well, I'm not going to try to justify it, um, except to say that when I'm at nighttime, I listen to the, I listen to the radio all night, and so I don't know if that counts or not. But we suffer. It doesn't count, Tom. No. You mean I have to be like scrolling through something for it to count? Okay, I didn't ask you any more questions. <laughs> or Devin, don't sit over there and agree with you. So we suffer though from news fatigue, right? We we take in all the bad news and, and all the news that's just around us, and then we sometimes, because of this, we lose sleep, right? Or we or we get anxiety or we we get stomach aches, or we have to take more tums, 
or more Tylenol because we suffer from this idea of what the news is. And the news that the people of Isaiah were hearing in this text as we go, even if you start at the very first part of chapter 40, Isaiah writes to a people who are in exile. They're isolated, they're distanced far from home in circumstances they didn't choose. But those circumstances were a result of their sinful choices. In the earlier verses, God announces through the prophet Isaiah that the people of God would return from exile. It's a new day in which the people would be free and restored. And God himself would dwell with them and feed them and protect them as a shepherd feeds and protects his flock. And that's just the news that God's people needed to hear. And it puts all the other news in proper perspective. And I was thinking about that in relation to us having news fatigue and what it is that we look at on our phones with screen time. And there is, in the midst of our lives, when we have this fatigue and all the bad news that we hear and all the things that dominate our conversations, we too have this need for good news. Now, I've been told in this new year, and if you follow me at all, you know that I've been trying to do something every single day to make a difference, just to have us think differently about our circumstances in life and what it is that we hear, and that somehow you and I, in the writing and the telling and the developing of our story, can make a difference in the world. And I try to do that every single day, and I've said it before, today's day 38 of 365. I've got to tell you, I typed that today, day 38 of 365, and I said to myself again this morning, man, Jim, you bid off a lot, because I have a long way to go. The other day, after my daily word, um, someone messaged me privately, and said to me, which was fine with me, and said to me, Jim, you've got this all figured out, don't you? And I said to the person, I really wish I did. Don't you guys wish you had it all figured out? I mean, you just knew every step that you needed to take, and you just had it all figured out. Don't you wish that was the case? And I said, man, I don't, I don't have it all figured out. But here's what I know, I said to the person, or what I think I know is that the news that we need to hear doesn't come to us on our televisions or on the Twitter screen or the Facebook screen or wherever else it is that we get our news. The good news that the people of Israel needed to hear and the good news that we need to hear is put in perspective in this 40th chapter of Isaiah. God reminds them and us that our worship, our worship needs to be the worship of God and not over the things that we fret or the things that are material. Those things, God says to us in the scripture, becomes idols for us. Much like the news has become idols for us. So God gives this news to the people of Israel. And it starts out in the verses that I started with. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood it since the earth was founded? That fundamental question for you and for me as we live our lives. We've heard it all. I've heard it all. All my life I've been in church since I was three or four or five weeks old. I don't know, maybe not that young because apparently as a baby, my mom would attest she's watching, I wasn't the happiest baby in the world. Not happy like I am now. I was rather colicky apparently. And they, I don't know about you all, did you ever, did you ever have colicky kids? No? 
Well, apparently in those days, if you were like me, you just turned on the dryer and put your put the baby on top of the dryer. And they closed the doors, apparently. I don't know if my mom did that or not, but I'm gonna get the test from her pretty soon. All my life I've heard it. Have you not known? Have, have you not heard? Have you not understood that the God who created us is the God who sustains us? The God who moves in our lives. And hear about this God as, I, as Isaiah describes this God. God who sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and his people, you and I, are like grasshoppers. In other words, this great God looks at the vast of the earth and sees us as grasshoppers. And God spreads his canopy over the entire face of the earth. This God, have you not heard? This God who sees us, seeks to restore us and not keep us in exile. And then God turns the tide on this. And, and maybe this is part of our problem and part of the things that I like to talk about every single day. Verse 23 says, God brings princes to naught. And reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. I think that's a reminder to us, and this is the one statement I'll make about any of this today. It's a reminder to us that our elevation these days of political leaders and putting them all on this big high throne is just wrong. And Isaiah says, they're here for a moment. And God sweeps them away like chaff. As a reminder to me and to you that it is God who has ordained us and formed us and made us and then moves us to be God's people. These are powerful reminders to us that we sometimes, when we get caught up in the news of the day, we become fatigued and we forget where God is at in the midst of our lives. You see, it's this God, as Isaiah speaks to us, that doesn't grow faint and doesn't grow weary and doesn't just turn and walk away from us. And this means of them offering this comfort to Israel is deeply theological. What the exiles needed to hear, what you and I needed to hear and know and believe is to hold on to the truth of who God is in our lives. And the person said to me, Jim, you have this all figured out. Tried to say to me that I have this rather blind optimism. My optimism is not blind. It's not blind. My optimism is rooted and grounded in this. My optimism is rooted and grounded in 57 years of hearing who God is. My optimism is grounded because my parents raised me. We lived in the country, and we grew this huge garden. This, our garden was as big as this side of the sanctuary. And we worked in it every day, and i got to tell you, I didn't love it. And I never understood. We harvest all this stuff, and we spend hours making tomato juice and freezing corn and green beans and doing all this stuff. And we spent hours and hours and hours doing that. And I never understood it because you know what we would do then? We'd go give it away. I never understood that. We'd take a box and take it to a person's house and give it to them. We never got money for it. We cut wood because that's how we heated our house and we cut it. And you know, if you cut wood, you get heated up like three times, right? So we would cut wood in eight-foot lengths and throw them in the back of the truck, and then we'd stack it up 
So there was two Getty Hobbs. And then, we'd, then we would split it and stack it, and that was three. Then we moved it from where we had it to the house and then carried it in the house. We got heated up more than once, and then we had neighbors moving across the street who had no wood. So you know what we did? Loaded our truck of our wood that heated me up four times, Lucas, four times. And you know what we did? We gave it to them. You see, my optimism about who God is isn't blind. It's rooted deeply. And it's not rooted deeply in just who I am. It's rooted deeply in everybody. The problem is, I think that we forgot. We're so consumed by the news in our lives. We're so consumed by the weather and the snow. And whether we're going to school the next day. And then we've used up all of our blizzard days and all of our snow days and all of our blizzard bag days. And now schools have to go to school on President's Day. Would that be true for any of you all? I know it's true for Fairline. And now the kids are mad already. We're consumed by it all. I'm consumed every day. I get a picture from Sydney Bonnie Car Star of my poor wrecked car. And every day they send me a picture of my poor wrecked car that's all torn apart. And every day the picture is the same. And I want to say to them, why are you sending me this picture? You're just depressing me. And every day it says expected return date, they add days to it. Then they called me and said, so Jim, we have a real problem. We can't get the parts that we need. And we're going to have your car at least another month. At least another month. And he was telling me that he has a car in there that's been in their body shop since Thanksgiving. Because they can't get parts. And I said to the insurance company, I think you should just total my car if you can't get parts. No, no, we can get parts, so I'm not going to do that. We're consumed by it, right? And those things that dominate and just take all of our attention. This reminder from God that there is no one or no thing who can compare with the God of Israel. And the implication and the imploring of the scripture is the same. Don't you know? Have you not heard? It rings out today like it did to the people of Israel because we should know, and because we have heard, the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In God's hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights and the hills are God's. The sea is God's, and all that God made. In God's hands molded the dry land. Oh. It's not rocket science that we're talking here. It's basic affirmations. It's like when you first learn the Apostles' Creed. I remember when I learned it. And I, did you have to stand up and recite it in front of church, right? Yeah, that really stinks. So did I. I think the reason I don't make kids do that is because I had to. But it's that basic foundation, right? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But before that, when we recite the Apostles' Creed, I stand up and I say to you all, now let's recite together this historic confession of our Christian The people of Israel who were struggling, who were in captivity, they didn't need some fancy sign. They didn't need some big flash of lightning in the sky. They didn't need a grand gesture or some miracle. What they needed was to hear from God and the God who founded the earth. No matter who's in charge or who carries the secret code's suitcase, the God of Isaiah is revealed to us. 
And it might seem for us that we're stuck in this, this plight of bad news and virus and all the things that dominate and take our attention. But God strengthens us and sustains us. Guides us through it. And you know, I think all the scripture that makes such a difference in our lives is wrapped up in the end. It's what we know well. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. Even youth grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And then we get this. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. People of ancient times, people of Israel, they saw an eagle who would molt. And the old feathers would fall off. Right? You ever seen that? And new feathers would come. Because of it. Because of it. They soared again. And for them, that was like new life. Friends, I have to tell you. That for us, for me, this isn't rooted in just some philosophy or something I learned at Bluffing College. It's rooted deep inside. And it's part of who I am. Have you not heard? Have you not heard? Have you not seen this God? creates us, who moves in us, is the God who guides us through these days. I pray that we'll find hope in that. And that maybe for us, what we need to do is shed the old feathers. You know? Shake them off. And soar in them. Because this God who delivered the people of Israel, because of their sin, they were in captivity. This God gave them new life. And God will not grow weary. And the understanding of God, we can't fathom. But strength is given to the weary. I invite you to pray. God, may your word speak to us today. May we be strengthened if we're weary. Maybe, maybe God, we just need to hear again. Hear again of your voice in our lives. To put aside and to reduce our screen time. To listen to you. To ask you. Not because we're blindly optimistic. Because it's deeply rooted in us. Maybe, just maybe, we need to go back to that elementary thing. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. May those words, God, be part of who we are in our faithful journey. We give you thanks and praise this day, God. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is We Have a Story to Tell to the Nations. <laughs>
when we have prayed the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll close our time as we listen to Jen as she pray, plays the post. Thank you. 